Hey everyone, welcome to week 19 of the Wild Woman Yoga series. I'm Lexi and our theme for class today is Wander. This is going to be a very slow and gentle flow, so all you need is your yoga mat and any props that you generally use to support your practice. Get all that and I will meet you back here. So we're going to start today in a standing pose so you can find yourself at like the not the top top of your mat like the middle above the middle of your mat um, grounding into all four corners of your feet maybe lifting all ten toes just to get the soles of your feet grounded down onto your mat and then releasing the toes Finding your stability, um, feet about hips width distance, your legs kind of engaged, keeping you stable. And you can close the eyes to find your center point inside. So checking inside to find your stability. Maybe drawing the shoulders back just a bit, palms facing forward at your side. And again, the eyes either closed or you can soften the gaze to the floor. And let's take a few breaths right here. Deep breaths drawing air into the deepest part of your belly and filling all the way up to the collarbones and exhaling and just taking a few deep breaths just like that Just settling into your body for practice today. And as you fully arrive here, maybe bringing to mind our theme for class, wander, which sounds a lot like wonder. Perhaps you are the type of person, like many of us are, that can get easily swept up in the current of modern life, becoming very goal-oriented and focused on endpoints, having that tunnel vision I'm getting one thing and then the next and the next and again and again. And even when we achieve these things, not always having the ability to savor them or really sink into the joy of that success or experience because we are again on to the next task. So today we play with wandering. Surrendering to the, what feels like the aimless current that is real life. Because the truth is none of us know what the next moment is, even if we plan. So 
So being in the energy of wandering through life and wondering at all the beauty along the way. On your next inhale, sweep the arms forward and up. Palms touch overhead, maybe clasping all fingers except for your pointer finger and your thumbs. So leaving those touching together. And you can keep the gaze straight ahead. Reaching up to the fingertips to the sky. On an inhale and exhale, stretching gently over to the right. Not too much if it, it makes you feel off kilter. Just waking up the spine and side body. Inhale back up to center. And exhale, stretching over to the left. Drawing that right arm towards the back of the room. To keep the upper body from slouching forward. And you can inhale back up to center, bending at the elbows to send the hands towards the back of your neck. Just giving a stretch to the triceps here. Back of your arms. And on your next inhale, allowing the hands to come up and hinging at the hips to fold forward. You can drop the head, keep a generous bend in the knees here. Maybe shake out the head, yes and no to release in your neck. And you can hang here or you can grab opposite elbows with opposite hands and just sway your upper body from side to side. And then finding stillness, bringing the hands to the mat. Bending at the knees to send the hips down towards the earth. You can come up on your tippy toes if you like, or you can come all the way onto your seat. So this is optional. If this is uncomfortable for you, feel free to come down onto your seat. But if you're okay here on your toes, widen the knees. So they're pointing out to the left and right, bringing your arms in between the knees and walking the hands gently forward, sending the torso in between your thighs. And you can drop the neck and head and come up onto your fingertips as if you had little cupcakes underneath your palms. Just stretch here. All the way from the upper back, down the arms to the fingertips. And if you're in a seated position, you can just gently come forward, holding your upper body over your crossed legs. With each inhale filling up and with each exhale, just allowing yourself to sink forward. Maybe walking the hands out a little bit more. And 
And the lungs are ready, lifting the head, walking the hands back towards the body. And coming down onto your seat. And finding a comfortable position for your legs so you can cross them and find some comfortable seated position. From here, we're just going to do a couple of circles with the upper body. So you can place your hands, palms down on your knees and begin to circle the chest forward and back, holding onto the knees. As you lean back to keep you from falling over. And we'll do a couple circles in one direction and then switch. So you can start with the circles relatively small and then widen them as you become more comfortable and as your body begins to warm up. Always taking things slow and introducing movement into the body gradually. And plus our theme is wander, so just take your time. And you can switch directions. Maybe close your eyes and just be in the movement. Notice what you feel. Without judgment, just curiosity. And eventually finding stillness back at center. You can bring the knees together, pointed towards the sky, soles of the feet on the earth. And we'll come into boat pose. If it's in your practice, you can lift the legs and keep them straight. If not, you can keep the shins parallel to the ground and your arms pointed towards the toes, parallel to the ground as well. And we'll hold here, leaning back for a few breaths. And then you can either gradually lower down or just support yourself with your hands and lower yourself down. My abs are a little bit weaker, so I, I opt for the supportive variation of that. And once you find yourself down on your back, you can go ahead and lift the arms overhead grabbing onto the left wrist with your right hand and bringing the hands over towards the corner, the right corner of the mat. So stretching similar to how we stretched in the beginning of class. You can also walk the feet over to the lower right corner, almost as if you're making a little crescent shape with your body. And just notice the line of energy from your fingertips down the side of your arms, your left waist and hip, your thigh, calf, and all the way to your left toes. 
and the sensations that might be there. And lifting the hands and bringing them back to center and walking on your heels back to center as well. Switching your grip, so gripping the right wrist with the left hand, stretching over to the left top corner of the mat. And then walking the heels over to the bottom left corner of the mat. Finding that same shape. On the left side. And this time noticing that same line of energy from the right pinky finger all the way down the side body, right side body to the right toes. If you pay attention, there is so much going on internally. Once you're ready, walking the heels back to center and lifting the hands back to center, you can take a you can clasp the hands and stretch long, pointing the toes and stretching the hands upward before eventually bringing your arms back at your side. From here, coming onto the left side of the body, and drawing the knees in for a fetal position, just cradling the head for a second. Feeling supported by the earth and supported by your own body as well. And eventually finding your way onto your belly. Take your time. From here, extending the right arm out to the side like a half T shape. And you can bring the right cheek to rest down on the earth and your left palm at about chest level down on your mat as well. Bending your left knee and pressing into your left hand to roll onto the right side. And your left toes can come to either touch on the outside of your right leg or maybe the entire left sole comes to the earth. Using that foot to determine how far into the stretch you'd like to go and listening to your body. Maybe you come up onto the toes and then gradually onto the ball of the foot maybe onto the heel, but wherever you are is perfect. There's no goal. Always coming into each pose with control and mindfulness of your own body.
As you're ready, rolling back onto your belly, bringing the left leg down to meet the right, and switching the position of your hands. So bringing the right hand at about chest level, palm down, and extending the left arm out to the side. I'm gonna move over a little bit here. So your left arm is extended perpendicular to your body. You can come down onto your left cheek. And bending the right knee, pressing into the right hand to gently roll yourself onto the left side of the body. And right toes come to touch on the outside of the left leg. Maybe you press into the ball of the right foot. Maybe you come all the way down onto your heel. And your right side might be different than your left side. So just being mindful of that and going as far as feels good for you. Taking a few deep breaths here. And then rolling back onto the belly. Bringing both hands now on either side of your rib cage. Tops of the feet to the earth. And pressing back into child's pose. Take a few breaths here, just allowing the torso to sink forward, hips pressing back. Noticing any tension if there is tension in the body and seeing if you can just send some breath there to release and the hips or shoulders or face and then as you're ready lifting up and tucking the toes and coming into downward dog. So pressing the earth away from you, keeping a bend in the knees, lifting the hips. And then only if it's comfortable for you, beginning to straighten the legs. But if the torso lifts off the tops of the thighs, then bend in the knees again. Again, there's no goal. There's no perfect way that any pose should look. Just find what feels best. And from here we're gonna walk the feet towards the hands. So take your time taking some small leisurely steps up to the hands, maybe you come onto the fingertips as your feet come closer to the hands. You can keep a slight bend in the knee, if that feels more comfortable. As you gradually bring the feet to meet the hands. And once you've arrived there, take a deep breath in 
and exhale, fold forward. And on an inhale, reach the arms out and up. Palms touch overhead, standing tall. Exhale, pull the hands through heart center. If you've kind of wandered into the middle of your mat like I have, you can come back to the top of your mat or the back of your mat, really. You're truly aimless today. And we're gonna sit back in chair pose. So sweeping the arms up overhead, or you can keep them in prayer position if that feels good. Arms up overhead and sinking low, sending the hips down and back. Keeping your weight in the heels here. You can lift the toes to ensure that your weight is in the heels. Pressing belly button to spine. And taking a deep breath in. And on an exhale, come up onto your tippy toes. Send the hands back behind you. Straighten in the legs and push your chest forward. Palms facing towards the back, kind of like airplane arms here. Into diver's pose. Finding maybe a point on the floor to gaze at, to maintain your balance. Maybe imagining a body of water that you would like to dive into. And then shifting the weight back into the heels, arms come up overhead bending in the knees back into chair pose. And play with that for a little bit, maybe come back and forth. So coming up onto the toes, palms face the back of the room, straightening in the legs, broadening in the chest. As if you're gonna leap forward, dive forward, and then sitting back. Arms overhead. What does that feel like? For you. And just noticing this, the very different sensations that might be happening in either of these poses. What's coming to mind? What comes to mind when, when you engage in this kind of dynamic movement or imagery? Next time you find yourself in chair pose, stay there for about a breath, and then exhale, fold forward, and just release the neck. Stepping back with the left foot, and bring your right hand on the inside of the right foot, and walk your hands towards the long side of your mat, finding a wide-legged forward fold, and then lifting halfway, turn the heels in, toes turn slightly out, and lift your torso up into goddess, so bending into the knees as you're Feet are turned slightly out, drawing the shoulder blades together. And maybe the arms come into a cactus goalpost position. Fingers spread wide. And if you'd like, you can try play with coming up onto your onto your toes and sinking low bending into the knees
If your heels are lifted, you can drop them down to the earth, straighten the legs, reach the arms up, palms touch overhead, and find your wide-legged forward fold. Once again, the feet can become parallel to each other, so turning your toes towards the long side of the mat. And gradually walking the hands towards the top of your mat and toes come to follow. From here, stepping the left foot back to meet the right and pressing the floor away from you to come into downward dog. You can lower the knees to the earth, untuck the toes, send the hips back and walk your hands forward to rest in child's pose. And why don't we stay here for a few breaths. If the mind begins to wander You can call it back to your body and instead send it to wander through the body, noticing sensation in the toes, the fingertips and everywhere in between. And allow your mind to wander through the container of your body. On your next inhale, lifting the head, lifting your hips up off feet, and lowering yourself down onto your belly. You may need to shift yourself back a bit. Bending in the knees, maybe make a pillow with your by stacking your forearms in front of you and lowering your third eye to the forearms and just windshield wiper the heels from side to side
Eventually allowing them to find stillness at center, but keep the bend in your knees here. I invite you to come up onto your forearms, forearms parallel to each other and your elbows stacked underneath your shoulders into a sphinx pose variation here. So broadening in the shoulders, really opening up in the front body, lifting the gaze and lifting the chin, finding a gentle back bend. And we're preparing for bow pose here. So you're more than welcome to stay in this position and you can come out of it at any time by stacking your forearms like we did before and lowering the forehead. Or you can stay here working on just broadening in the chest and Finding a backbend position that feels good for you. You can always move the forearms farther away from you. So moving the hands further in front of you to lessen the backbend. Maybe you walk them out all the way in front of you, completely extended, and just lift the head. And then lower the head. So we're being very gentle with the back here. If you'd like to play around with some of the positions that I've mentioned thus far, go right ahead, wander through it. And if you'd like to come into bow pose, you can do that as well. So lowering the forehead to the ground and grabbing onto the tops of the feet with your hands. And on an inhale, lifting the forehead and pressing the tops of the feet into your hands as you gently lift the thighs off the ground, pressing into your hips, hips into the earth, broaden the chest, And a few breaths here, coming out at any time if you need to. And releasing, lowering the forehead, releasing the feet, tops of the feet can come to the earth and stacking the forearms, lowering the third eye, maybe moving the hips from side to side. Just relaxing and releasing. And then as you're ready, lifting the head, bringing the palms on either side of your rib cage and pressing back into child's pose. Just as a counter stretch for your low back. Lifting the head and walking the hands back towards the body, sitting up on your heels, knees together. And bringing your palms down on the tops of the thighs, shoulder blades down and back in hero's pose and just 
sitting back here, maybe close the eyes. And eventually swinging your legs out to the left and out in front of you. Finding your way onto your back. First, we'll draw the knees in tight to the chest. Maybe point and flex the feet before extending your legs high as if they were up against a wall. We point and flex your toes here. And we're gonna do some sky walking. So this is fun if you're outside, but if you were inside escaping the mosquitoes like me, you can use your imagination. So flexing the feet, And alternating your feet in like a sweeping motion. So bringing the left foot close to the torso and the right foot closer to the ground and then switching. Almost as if you were walking on the sky or like gliding on the sky cross-country skiing on the sky. And finding stillness, lowering the soles of the feet to the earth and extending your left leg long, drawing the right knee into the chest and guiding it over to the left side with your left hand. You can bring your gaze over to the right. Coming back to center, extending the right leg long, drawing the left knee into the chest, hugging it tight, and then using the right hand to gently guide your left knee across the body over to the right side. You can bring your gaze to the left if that feels good for your neck. If not, you can just keep the gaze straight towards the sky. Allow the gentle twist of your spine. coming back to center and taking any final pose that your body is asking for. Just check in, see if there's any movement that you're, that would feel good for you. Maybe stretching long or drawing in tight. 
whatever you need. And then eventually finding your way back to Shavasana. So your legs extended long, taking the heels about as wide as the mat, making room for the thighs, the legs, allowing the hands to rest at your side, a ways away from the body. Releasing in the belly, releasing in the face, the jaw soften. Softening the face, allowing the shoulders to melt down. And just integrating this practice of wandering. And the next time you hear my voice, I will be guiding you out of Shavasana. So for now, just Surrendering. I invite you to stay in Shavasana. You can bring small movement to your fingers and toes just to bring awareness back to the body if it's wandered. But stay with your eyes closed, stay with your body lying on the ground.
If we think about animals in the wild, it's not often that they are running unnecessarily. Usually only run if they're in danger. Are hunting. But I think that's something very clear that we can all picture this animal that is in danger and runs and sprints. But for us, we often run, even if we're not in danger. Some of us run all the time, from one thing to the next. Maybe you can ask yourself what it is that drives that behavior. Why are you running? What are you running from or towards? And is it necessary? Is it worth the cost of energy and life and mental space? The answer may be yes. But more often than not, it could be no. And perhaps there is room for more wandering. And more strolling through this beautiful, full life that you have. I thank you for sharing practice with me. Be well.